We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Devin Haney calls Lomachenko a sore loser and taunts crying Lomachenko. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, Devin Haney, the villain. Devin the villain Haney in full effect. And I got to admit, I'm kind of liking the Devin Haney villain arc. He's just like, he's leaning into it, really. Like, he doesn't care that people are mad. He knows that he set history multiple times, becoming the youngest ever undisputed. And he feels he beat Lomachenko. Now, a boxing reporter says, Vasil Lomachenko manager, Igis Klimas, has now sent letters to the WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO, insisting that they appeal the Devin Haney defeat and asking that they are made mandatory for all four of Devin Haney's lightweight world titles and will try to force a rematch. Devin Haney responded with the crying emoji, AKA Lomachenko in the BTS that was released where he was crying, he was crying in there, right? Now, Lazy Lefty, shout out to Lefty on Twitter. He says, never in my life have I seen this level of ungratefulness and entitlement in boxing from getting a title shot in their second pro fight to an immediate title shot after losing their second pro fight to a franchise title that no longer exists they think boxing revolves around them and this was in regards to that letter being sent to all the sanctioning bodies Devin Haney seen this and replied this guy is a effing sore loser get this privileged sore loser out of boxing he makes excuses as he goes take your loss like a man stop crying it was set up for you to win for the third time in your career and you failed tell the commission to give me back my four hundred thousand dollars for that push wow so Devin Haney is admitting that he did get fined you know they took a percentage of his purse he made upwards of four million or whatever and they decided to take 400k which is pretty steep there's boxers right now a lot of boxers I would say the vast majority of boxers who aren't at the Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Wilder, you know, level, Gervonta Davis level that aren't making 400K. So for Devin Haney to have 400K shaved off his purse, you know, that's pretty steep because again, there's a lot of fighters who they don't even fight for 400K and he's paying that in the fine. I mean, I've already told you my thoughts on the fine. It was, we, we've seen, they're trying to soften my sport of boxing. Canelo pushed Caleb Plant in California and Vegas and California and New York are the strictest commissions. And Canelo mushed up Caleb Plant's eye and causing his glasses to break into Caleb Plant's cheek and cut him and leave a permanent scar. But he didn't have no fine. And he's supposed to be the face of boxing, making more money than everybody. He didn't face no fine. But Devin Haney gets fined. So it goes to show you that old media, they're angry when what they want and their media darlings lose now as far as Devin Haney what he's saying to Lomachenko I agree Lomachenko has had many opportunity and he's in denial he has three arguably four losses because I definitely think he lost to Jermaine Ortiz did not look fly in that fight and really that's a pathetic if you really think about it and just hear me out hear me out this is not just Lomachenko slander this is all facts based there has never in the history of the sport of boxing been anyone as celebrated and touted as a Lomachenko with the record that he really truly should have, which his record should be 20 fights with four losses. Even if you don't include the fight that the judges didn't have him losing, which is the Jermaine Ortiz fight, his record would be 20 and three. That is not a great record for boxing. You have 20, you only have 20 fights. 20 fights and you couldn't make it to 20 and 0 with being undefeated meanwhile people act like they still need to see more from floyd mayweather and he's 50 and 0 people like crawford is he's like 37 pushing 40 and 0 
and people act like they need to see more. Even Gennady Golovkin, he went all the way to the Canelo fight. He had almost 40 fights or so, 30, 40 fights before he lost to a Canelo. And when he lost, that was controversial. So I'm enjoying Devin the villain Haney. A lot of crying and I'm feasting off of their tears. People keep saying the fight was crazy and the robbery and the worst thing. And you're going to stop watching boxing. Good. I want you to stop bo watching boxing because a lot of people blow things out of proportion. We've seen far worse and more egregious, quote unquote, robberies. This was a close fight. Really, it was being dictated and the pace was being dictated by Devin Haney. Lomachenko tries to flurry and show signs of life. And, you know, to his credit, he was able to fight his way back into the fight like that. But at the end of the day, it's not this egregious, sensational robbery that people are talking about. People are talking about, oh, yeah, I'm never watching boxing again. OK, don't watch boxing again because you obviously don't know ish about boxing. Then you got people who are saying just like Lomachenko crying and his team crying, that's his fan base and his base and old media crying the same exact way. You got to fight and people say it's this crazy grave injustice and robbery and then you ask them what their scorecard is, and they say it's Lomachenko 115 to 113. You dumb son of a bitch. That's one round away from a draw. So how is it this like immense robbery, and you have scored it for Lomachenko one fight away from a draw? So people are so narrow-minded in the sport of boxing and have so much biases and favoritism that you believe that your scorecard of 115-113 is so impeccable that you scored every single round in a fight like that so so pristine and so precise that no one could have a couple swing rounds slightly different than you had them you know it's like the level of omnipotence in boxing is uncanny so you think you're you're burnt sugar over here you're such a great scorer that you scored every on first viewing on first viewing, you scored every single round perfectly in a fight where the tempo was changing in the mid to late portions of the fight. You scored it so perfectly that you couldn't make no mistakes. It's inconceivable to say that Devin Haney won. Anybody telling you that usually is trying to push an agenda. It's the race fans. It's old media, etc. It wasn't even that type of fight where you could say like, I mean, even for Devin Haney, you can't say Devin Haney won 12 rounds out of 12, but I don't even think Devin Haney or his team is saying that. They're admitting that it's a close fight and it's a good fight and Lomachenko is a competitor, but they're not. what they're not doing is crying like Lomachenko is crying. So the more I think about it, the more I like it. Lomachenko absolutely being a baby, let him tell it. He feels, even though he should have four losses, he believes that he should have zero losses. You know, it's this level of delusion and denial. Like, even if you exclude the Devin Haney fight, you still have losses. That's why I don't understand why it's so hard for people to understand that Lomachenko lost or could lose when he's lost before. He lost his second pro fight. And ESPN tried to save him. They put up graphics where they completely removed his losses and made it look like he was an undefeated fighter. But all that kicking and screaming and crying really equates to nothing because the history books will show Devin Haney is the youngest undisputed champion. And it will show that Devin Haney defeated and beat in a great fight, great tactical fight, a two-time Olympic gold medalist. That's serious. And it's that simple. At the end of the day, Lomachenko, he got to work on not giving up rounds. I mean, you're an idiot if you're in a close fight and you give up several rounds and then you hurt your opponent in the 11th and in a close fight, you decide, hey, I decide I want to take off the 12th round. You deserve to lose. Peace. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks a brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself but other people on the youtube platform super thanks a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators hopefully you guys enjoy the content super thanks the future is now 
The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.